Hey everyone, Amy, 100 plus abandoned dogs of Everglades, Florida. Hi everybody. I'm going to wait until I see a few people jump on before I start speaking. This video is to update everybody on the situation that um, happened last night with the dog in the crate. So I'm going to just hold off until I see a good amount of people and then I can continue and update everybody on what has been happening all night, all day. I want to say thank you for everybody that's been taking the time to write an email, make a phone call. So thank you for that. Power in numbers. Am I clear? It is a horrible situation. Horrible. <sighs> Thank you, Cheryl. Just let me know that you're there and just let me know that I'm clear. I know that um, uh, we're all furious, so furious, Barbara, so, so, so furious, epic fail. Thank you for the clear, Judy. So I'm home, I am in my quiet place, I'm in my bedroom, the door is shut, um, and I'm just going to take a moment to collect my thoughts. Um, there's so many things going through my head that I don't want to just start rambling. I want to stay focused. Um, last night was a huge adrenaline rush, as you can see from all the video, um, what transpired last night. So if you're just jumping on and I start talking, um, please don't ask me what's happening. Please wait. Go back after I shut down and watch the video from the beginning because I don't want to keep recapping. I would like to just just tell exactly facts. This is facts. I'm going to just from A to Z, from beginning to end, what transpired. Um, the videos are pretty clear. They're raw. Um, they're live. They're not edited. They are exactly what happened and what you saw. There were some things that happened behind the scene as far as when I shut down the video, when I received phone calls. Um, and then I'll, I'll update you on basically what's happened since from the start to now. And then what happened late last night after we shut down and what transpired today. <clears throat> so let me start off by saying thank you to all of you that sent emails, made phone calls from different states. Um, I received a call from the police officer who stated that he asked me to please remove his phone number from our post because he could not answer the calls. They are so overly inundated. Um, so thank you for that. I'm going to start from the very, very, very beginning. I was home and Carol and I were sitting on our couch and I was tagged on a post on Lost Dogs of Broward. And it was a girl named Brenda. She posted an address, no photo of a dog, um, that the dog was locked in a cage for 48 hours with no food and no water. I navigated and put the address into my navigation. It was literally five minutes from my house. So I told Carol, I'm going to get dressed and I want to go over there and I want to check out the situation. I have a senior dog. He's blind. I have other dogs. And instead of getting everybody all settled in their position, um, I told her to stay home and I'll check it out. And if there's something that needs her, I'll let her know or I'll go to the rescue house and have one of my other girls or Shelly come with me so I wouldn't go alone. When I went to the address, which was 630 Northeast 46th Court, 
630 Northeast 46th Court in Oakland Park, Florida. BSO handles this district. I went to the property. I saw the dog. Now, I want you to picture it's an apartment. It, it It's from the front. It's just flat. There's no doors. There's no windows. And to the right of each side of the building are doors. To the right side, if you're facing this building, to the right side is where the crate was placed in a pathway of dirt. And I saw the dog sitting in there. And I saw that there was no food. And I saw that there was no water. And I saw that there was no pan in the bottom of the crate. And I also saw that there was no shelter, which I showed in my video. The dog was not under an overhang of any kind. The dog could stand up, but he was scrouched down. Um, he could turn around. She could turn around, but not comfortably. Uh, it's all grates on the bottom, so very uncomfortable for a dog. It clearly, to me, and apparently to every one of you, shows clear neglect. Now, I could have, but I did not. I go through the proper channels. I did not steal a dog. I did not go on to any property. I called the officials. I called the BSO police department. I was dispatched by the operator um, and I, she asked me if I wanted to speak to an officer and I said yes. I then got on the phone, Officer um, Reyes. Officer Reyes got on the phone and he said, what's going on? And I told him there is a dog, exactly what I just told you, um, in the condition that a person had said that they have seen this dog for 48 hours in this crate, in this situation. And I gave him the address and he told me straight out, he said, I'm sorry, but I can't come to the call. And I said, not even, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not coming to the call. And I said, what do you mean you're not coming to the call? And he said, we're in a pandemic and this is not an emergency. I was instructed not to answer calls such as this. And I said, you're kidding me, right? So you're not going to come out here. So I said, what are you telling me to do? I mean, what am I supposed to do? Go on to the property and take care of this myself? And he goes, do what you want to do. So I said, can I speak to your supervisor? And then I hung up and I got a call back from Officer Mulan. And he called me um, and I told him of the situation. And he said, yeah, I'm not coming out. And I said, well, can you help me understand? I have two BSO officers with a dog in distress. I need assistance. So what are you suggesting that I do with this dog? And he said, I don't know. You're an animal rescue, right? If you're so concerned, get some food and leave it for the dog until tomorrow. I said, I'm not leaving this dog here in this situation. He said, well, then do what you want to do. I said, are you telling me, officer, that I should go on this property and, and, and address the situation by myself with no backup from the officials. Are you telling me that's what you're telling me to do? So if something happens, I have your permission that this is what you're telling me to do. He said, I'm not telling you. You do whatever you want to do. So that's what happened. Then in the interim, I made a phone call to Animal Control. And as I made the phone call from Animal Control, I gave them the address, didn't know if they were going to come, didn't know anything, if they're even working, um, hung up the phone, and all of a sudden, Carol showed up on the scene. And then when Carol showed up, the police officer, the first police officer, Reyes, showed up. When Carol got out of the car and we were showing you the dog and the situation, Officer Reyes pulled up. We, the three of us walked towards the dog. We obviously, all three of us, including Officer Reyes, realized and he saw what we saw with this dog in a crate, in distress, and there were two padlocks that were on the crate locked, so we could not open that crate. I remembered I had bolt cutters in my car, so I went and got the bolt cutters, and as you could clearly see from the video, while we were all trying to free this poor dog, the officer took the bolt cutters and he assisted in cutting the entire crate from the top around while she was sticking the female Malinois was taking her neck and her face and sticking it from a square in the crate, 
putting her head through this crate, which was, you could see the adrenaline rush. We were so worried about her safety. And we kept pushing her face back in and trying to pull her back with a slip lead that we put around her neck to pull her back while we worked on opening and cutting open this crate to break her free. We got her out of the crate and Carol walked her, ran, she ran, to Carol's car, jumped into Carol's car with the police officer walking and escorting all three of us off the property. We thanked the police officer. Carol was in her, her car. I was in my car. We then went to the rescue house, which was literally three to four minutes away. And you could see from all that transpired in the video, we brought the Malinois, female Malinois, into the house. We brought her into a room. We gave her water. We offered her food. We tried to get bedding and comfort. And then we decided to take her out into our fenced-in backyard where she could run and get some of her energy out. We were playing with her with toys. We were, you know... Um, just she was jumping over the tunnel it felt so good she was drinking a ton of water um and then all of a sudden i uh got a call from the police officer reyes and carol had that carol had already left and went home to our dogs and as i'm on the phone with officer reyes um carol called in and Officer Reyes called me and said, you need to return the dog now. This is the same officer that cut the dog out of the crate. We named her Mallory. Cut the dog out of the crate and assisted with us removing the dog. He said, you need to bring that dog back here now. Or I'm going to have to arrest you for theft. Arrest me for theft. How are you going to arrest me for theft when you cut the dog out yourself and you handed the dog and you escorted that dog off that property? So while I'm on the phone and Carol called, instead of switching calls, I merged Carol onto the phone call with myself and Officer Reyes. And Carol, instinct, she, she kept repeating, Officer, you're asking us or demanding us to return this dog how do you know this is the actual owner? What proof do you have, Officer Reyes, that this is the owner of this dog? He said, I am not going to debate. I'm not going to argue with you. You are to bring the dog back now. Now, in the interim, Carol keeps repeating. In the background, I can hear a man and a woman screaming at the top of their lungs, literally Stop playing me, motherfucker. Stop playing me. Bring me back my effing dog. <clears throat> he was screaming over the officer. And I was like, oh, my God. I can't believe I'm going to have to bring this dog back to this situation and to this kind of an owner. Clearly, it's an abuse. Clearly, this dog is neglected. I don't know what goes on behind, do no, behind closed doors. But what I can tell you is what I saw with my own eyes in front of the doors, outside on the dirt and the condition that this dog was being kept in. I was told by the poster and the person that alerted that jogs and lives in the neighborhood or mother lives in the neighborhood, that this dog has been out there for 48 hours straight in that crate with no food, no water. So now I'm on the phone with him. Carol's still saying to him, what proof do you have? Do you have any proof of medical? Do you have any vaccines? And he kept saying, I have a picture. She goes, a picture? What do you mean a picture? So he demanded we brought the, bring the dog back or he was going to arrest me. I did say, why don't you come here and pick up the dog with the owner? And he said, no, that's not going to happen. You're going to bring the dog back here. So that is when I sat there for about five minutes and I was sick to my stomach and my team was there. They said, what do you mean? What do you mean you have to bring the dog back? What do you mean? And I said, either I have to bring the dog back or I'm going to get arrested and I could lose my 501c3 and put all these dogs that I have under my care in jeopardy. Um, and possibly, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I will say this. There are innocent people in jail every day. Innocent people. You back talk to an officer, they, they'll arrest you. So I had everything videoed, everything documented. Unfortunately, I did not have the conversation video. Um, 
So we put the dog into Keith's car, seat belted her in the back seat. Um, I did a live video from the car until I pulled up to the house as we were returning her back to the owner. As we pulled up, uh, Keith was carefully and responsibly unhooking her from the seatbelt clip from the leash um, and, and getting the leash in hand as we were getting her out of the car. And as he was doing that, the male owner was screaming, let her go. Oh, let her go. And Keith's like, I'm not going to let her go in a bit in a street there. You know, I'm not going to just let a dog go off leash. There's a leash law, people. There is a leash law for a reason. So as Keith is, on, is taking her out of the car, the police officer says in the video, let her off the leash. Just let her go. Keith still was fighting about letting her off the leash. And let her off the leash and the dog went running up to the guy and jumping on him. And his hands were up in the air, didn't touch her. And off they went into the house. The female, whether it's his wife, girlfriend, I don't know who she is, was out there. She was screaming at me, calling me every name in the book. I, I, I don't even know what to, how to respond to a class like this. I got into the car. And then I started talking to the officer. That is where you will hear the officer basically talking over me, telling me that I'm not listening, that I don't know the law, that he stated in that video when we returned that dog that the way that she was living in that crate is legal. That's legal. He said, I, I don't think you know the law. That's legal. And he also said, that dog is worth $1,000. Really? I don't know any dog that's worth $1,000. And why are you putting a value on a dog's life? Why are you even bringing up a value to place on an animal's life in a situation like this? What the hell does that have to do with anything? And I did offer that guy $500 for his dog because I don't give a shit about the money. I wanted to get that dog safe and I didn't want to put that dog back into that abusive situation. But my hands were tied. We were told that that was the owner. Officer Reyes stated to myself, to Carol, repeatedly, that is the owner. You need to return that dog or you are going to be arrested for theft. And I'm not going to discuss this with you. Now, let's, let's get past that. As you can imagine, after we returned her, how sick we were to our stomachs. Carol's been sick all day. I have been sick all day, very little sleep, woke up so angry, so upset. The phone has not stopped ringing last night, the emails, the private notifications. This morning, between the chief of police, between the major, between special victims unit, um, I am going to now bring you to date what is happening now. This is what happened and this is what transpired last night. Today, right this moment, today, what is happening today? First of all, I'm going to give some facts and some information about, number one, the address of this incident is 630 Northeast 46th Court in Oakland Park, Florida. That is BSO district jurisdiction. Um, the case number is 12 2014 001251. That is the case number for this cruelty case investigation. It is now in the hands of Special Victims Unit. And it is Michael Baldwin, who is the supervisor who I've been on the phone with pretty much all day, who is investigating this situation. I spoke to him just before I got on and did started this update of this live video for you. And I got some very disturbing information. But hold on. So Special Victims Unit is now handling the case. Michael Baldwin, which I have his email all over. It's actually on this video. So when you shut down, his email is there. He did ask me that if people want to email him 
absolutely, he, he welcomes that. But please, people, I guess they're, they're sending him emails, fuck you, blah, blah, blah. He's not, he said, I'm not the officer that they should be attacking. I am the supervisor of special victims that is investigating. So that's, I wanted to clear that up. Um, Brenda, who is the witness who posted about this and asked for assistance, which is how I heard about it. As right now, I'm getting private messages, any news, any news. Um, Brenda, I reached out and I spoke with Brenda today. Brenda wrote her statement. Brenda is going to write an affidavit and it's going to be notarized. That's going to happen tomorrow for them to do their investigation. Um, Alan um, Hubig, H-U-B-I-G, um, District Chief. He has been also receiving a lot of emails. That's fine. You can send them there too. Um, there are two officers. Um, there are two officers that are on this case. Officer Sun, S-O-N-N, and Officer Schnackenberg. Schnack, Schnackenberg. Those two officers are working underneath the supervisor, which is Michael Baldwin. Now, with that being said, we all know the facts, right? We know what happened and we know what transpired. Number one, the dog was in a crate. The dog was in a crate with padlocks, which is illegal, and it's against the law to leave an animal in that situation in those conditions. No food, no water, no pan, no shelter. The officer, Reyes, when he was on the scene, and he assisted with us breaking the dog out of the crate, and then demanded that we return the dog back. And when we returned the dog back, if you watch the dialogue um, back and forth, the conversation between myself and Officer Reyes, you are going to clearly see the way that he spoke with me as to make it as though I was the criminal. And all he kept saying was, I'm going to write the report. I'm going to write the report both sides. And he kept referring back to, I'm going to write that the owner had food in the, in the back of his van or in his house. That's what you're focusing on, other than the fact that the dog was left out there. And you're telling me that that is legal by law? Let me ask you, all these people that fight day in and day out to change laws for statutes to protect animals. And everybody gets so excited. A law has passed protection for animal cruelty. It's going to be, you know, a felony and jail time. And really, what, where is that come into play? Because I have yet to see any officer that I need assistance from back the law of protection for animals. So if we have laws in place and if the officials are not going to enforce them, the laws mean nothing. Nothing. And I can tell you from experience... Sorry. I can tell you from experience a lot of officers sadly do not know the laws or the statutes. To protect animals and they will come right out and they will be honest and they will tell you they don't know their own laws and it, i think it is their duty and their job to learn the uh, the laws to protect animals as it is to protect the citizens another question which is not part of the animal part and the abuse part but i want to ask you something here he is on the phone telling me that he's not answering calls because he was given strict orders because of the pandemic that he can't come out to these calls because he can't put his other officers in danger. So what does that mean? So are you not answering calls when people are in distress or is it just animals that don't matter? And why, Officer Reyes, did you come to a scene with no mask on and why were you there without your protective gear? When we were wearing our masks, why were you there? You were this close to the owners. They were in your face. You don't know where they've been. They don't know where you've been. Why are you walking around with no mask on? On duty. I felt 
so degraded and I felt like I was to be made a criminal. And that is just plain out wrong. I'm sorry. This is an officer of, of the law that we are supposed to be able to count on for protection. Now I will update you what transpired today. I was home. <clears throat> I received oh, a phone call oh. from a woman. I have the phone number. She started screaming at the top of her lungs. It is the owner of the dog, the so-called owner of the dog, called my number and started screaming at me, threatening me. And she said, I know who you are. I am going to fucking kill you. I know where you live. I am going to blow your house up. I'm going to come to your house. I'm going to fucking kill you. Bitch, if you send one more person to make my, one more phone call in reference to my dog, I'm going to get come over there and I'm going to fucking fuck, I'm going to kill you. Now I've got a death threat from the owner. And I called the uh, Michael Baldwin from Special Victims Unit. And told him that I got a death threat and I gave, I have the phone number. <clears throat> and he told me to make a supplement report. Now, when she called me and she started screaming at me, I, I told her, I don't know who, you, I don't know what you're talking about. No, I did not record it. It happened very, very fast. I wish I did. Um, she, when she was screaming and threatening me, um, I, was saying to her, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know who this is. I don't know what dog. I don't know any dog. I don't know what, you, what you're talking about. And uh, she kept saying, yes, you do. Yes, you do. And then she said, well, if, you, if it wasn't you, then I apologize. So I was kind of debating whether or not to make a supplement and file a report, but I'm going to file a report. And she told me that she knew who I was because the officers that had been coming to her house all day today told her, who our rescue was. So they put out the information of who our rescue was. Bear with me. My phone needs some charge, so that's nothing new. Um, hey, babies. So now I have uh, death threats that you don't take lightly. And I told the officer... You know, I don't, you can't take this lightly. I mean, these people are not playing with a, you're not playing with a normal mind here. And um, my life is, means everything to me. I have a rescue. I have so many lives depending on me. Um, I have a lot of work to do and saving lives. And I have a lot of animals that are depending on me, including my own and my wife. Hey, babe. Hi, honey. If you have anything you want to say and you want to come in, feel free. I'm watching. Okay. So now I have to file a supplement report against death threats. Um, so when, right before I went live here, okay, I'm back. Right before I went live here to update you, I got a call from the um, special victims unit, Michael Baldwin, and he had called me to ask me if I filed the supplement report for the death threat. <clears throat> And I said, I told him my concern and I asked him what he thought I should do. And he said, I can't give you legal advice. He said, I can just tell you what your options are. So I said, okay, I'm going to do it. And I said, what would that, what would the supplement report do for me? And basically, um, it, they would go to the house. They were, would inspect for if they had any guns, if they had any bombs or if they had any, anything that could be harmful. Um, and make note, and basically then I could get a restraining order. Um, I wouldn't doubt it. But I don't know what they're doing on their own time. I don't know these people. I'm not going to, um, you know, um, make accusations of what they're doing. I don't know them. I only know what I see. So I am reporting on what I see and what I know, not on what I think. Um, so... This is the most disturbing part. When uh, Mr. Baldwin from Special Victims Unit called to check to see if I had filed my 
report. He also, I said, is there anything new on the case? And he said that the dog is no longer there. The dog is no longer at the house. When animal control apparently went to the house, the people that we were told by Officer Reyes were the owners of the dog, that we needed to return the dog. Today, we were just told by Special Victims Unit, Michael Baldwin, that the updated information is that the people that we returned the dog back to that Officer Reyes says was the owner, because he had proof, they stated to Animal Control that they gave the dog back to the owner. Who's the owner? Where is this dog? Can you imagine? What's going on in our heads? Where is this poor dog? How is she being kept? So we asked, what do you mean the dog was... I thought we, we were told that was the owner. They're investigating it. They're following up. The two officers that are um, under Michael Baldwin, who is their supervisor, again, Officer Sun, S-O-N-N, -N, and Officer Schneckenberg, those are the two officers that are supposedly investigating where the dog is. And yes, I have my concealed weapons license. I have a license to carry, and so does Carol. And we are very well protected in our home and on us at all times. So make no mistake that I have the license to carry, and I will protect myself if I need to. We both have our permits. Yes, we do. So I don't take a threat lightly. And if I have to use something to protect myself, trust me, I won't think twice about it. It's a really, it's a really scary life. It's a really scary world that we are living in between the pandemic and everybody's basically lost their minds. We're fighting for survival. And we have to deal with this shit. And where is the protection from the law? Where is our protection? Where is the officials? What, how did this happen? This officer, number one, he needs to be held accountable for his actions. Because he failed epic. He epically failed in every aspect of this whole situation. I'm just reading some of the comments. Some of them don't make any sense, so I'm not going to respond to them. No offense, but... Um, <clears throat> we're, we are so worried about this dog. And we're worried about ourselves. We're worried about ourselves. You've got crazy lunatics that are out there threatening. They're going to kill you. They're going to blow you up. Okay? So, you know between the dog, between the police officer, the way we were talked to, the way we were treated. All the videos have been uploaded. Thank you, Tammy, who handles our website. Um, she uploaded all the live videos that I took last night to our YouTube, so they're easily to send. Um, if anybody needs them to um, help us out in any way, shape, or form, they're all on our YouTube. So you can go to our YouTube channel, and if you need them, we can send them to you. But um, it made it easy us, easier for us to share with the authorities. Um, I need to, yes, I absolutely, I want to file a report against Officer Reyes. He needs to be held accountable for what he did and how he treated this dog and how he treated us. What, babe? I just want you want to shut that, that off before yeah. you come and talk? Carol wants to say something. I only want to say, um, the only thing I want to say is that usually with situations like this, a lot of times they count on things to quiet down. So um, I know that they're getting inundated, but that's how we get things done. done yep. And um, we have to continue to send in 
the letters and the show your concerns, the emails, and, and, and so on and so forth to all these people that need to hear what's happening. So please continue, and we thank you for doing that. Don't stop doing it. Just because you're getting an update, you continue to allow your voices to be heard because she doesn't have one. Thank you, guys. So you heard her. Um, it's true. It's it's the squeaky wheel. So, um, and we are truly, when they say that we're their only voice of protection, that's not a cliche. That is fact. That is the truth. Um, we live it every day. So what I am going to ask of all of you is to please continue to send your emails. Email to your fingers are falling off. As soon as you quiet down and go away, that's it. Keep it going. We are going to keep it going on the investigation part. Um, I know, I know, Jody. we worry too. Every day, I don't think people understand. Every single day that we put ourselves out there and in a situation like this, which is more times than not, um, you're, 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 you know, you're putting your life in danger. You are putting your life in danger. We've been doing this for going on nine years. Um, whenever there is a cruelty case or situation, um, it's always, it is always our rescue that is tagged. Um, 100 plus, and they'll tag my name, Amy Roman, 100 plus. And I, I don't see, and, and that's fine. It's fun. I spoke to a couple of rescues last night. Um, you know, just to kind of bounce ideas. And they're like, we don't, we don't do what you do. You know, we don't go out. We don't do what you do. So <clears throat> it, it's a dangerous place to be, but it's who we are. And I guess that's what makes us who we are. Um, it's all we know. It's what we've done from day one since we've been rescuing when we started this rescue mission. I started it in 2011 and it's been it's just been it just gets crazy it's it's constant you know um but this is who we are we would jump in our cars at one o'clock two o'clock three in the morning and go to neighborhoods we drive hours and not know where we're going and not sometimes not knowing if we're going to come out alive there's no reception our phones aren't working um dangerous neighborhoods where police show up in you know bulletproof vests and they're, they're looking at us and they clearly say, what are you doing here? It's not safe for us. What are you doing here? Um, so, you know, I mean, as we get older, I think we get a little bit more cautious. But um, it's just what we do. So and with all this being said, um, Carol's right. Please continue to write your emails. And listen, guys, we're not here to fight with people. We're not here to make enemies with anybody. Um, we're here to help the ones that are in need, like this poor dog. Um, I can't get her out of my head. Um, you know, I, I just, I'm so worried about her and I'm so disgusted in Officer Reyes, um, the way that he handled the situation. I'm so disgusted in the way that he treated us um, as criminals. And when I go back and I watched the videos and I listened to him and I watched everything transpire, it made me more and more angry. Uh, it made all of our supporters, I mean, there's 1.2K, 1,200 people watching this video right now while I'm sitting in my bedroom updating on a dog. <clears throat> is, is, there, is there, you know, I think I've pretty much updated everything. Um, if you have anything important um, please ask now so I can answer some questions because then sometimes I go back. If there's so many comments at once, just popping, popping, I'm going to try to read, um, anything. I'm not going to let the death threat go. Um, we don't know the dog. We don't know where the dog is. We don't know where the dog is alive. We don't know anything. Um, 
I, that's the good question, Linda. That's that's basically what I'm saying. We were forced to, um, I don't know if they know my home address. I don't know, Jamie. I don't know. Um, you know, my address on my 501 is my rescue house, which is one of the reasons we never put our personal addresses on our 501 because that's public information. And <clears throat> we always put the rescue house but remember, our dogs are in our rescue house. So, I gotta worry about my dogs. People are crazy. I'm going to file a report. I'm going to file a complaint. And um, all I can tell you is, I, I, I just, that's all I can do right now. Like I said, I have a license to carry, and so does Carol. We are protected. Um, I'm not going to let anybody come near me without protecting myself. Okay. So basically, it's just a lot of questions asking, and, and basically they're worried, and um, I don't see... Um, that's what they're trying to find out. That's what I asked. When are you going to follow up? Yes, we are following up. We're trying, we're going to find out. And he's going to call me as soon as he finds out where the dog is. They're following up with the people that we returned the dog to. The one that gave me the death, death threat. Um, that's where the two officers are supposedly, we're being told tonight, following up, finding out where the dog went. So that's all I can tell you right now. To make sure the dog is Stay there. safe or is where they say. What's the matter, babe? Babe, you can let the dogs in. I don't oh, care. Okay. Hi, Brody. Um, with that being said about the rescue house, just want to let you know that the rescue house has cameras in every corner. Well, the, the rescue house has cameras in every oh, corner. And, um, the rescue house has um, an alarm. And we also have and we people also, there who carry. And exactly. So, There's also people at the rescue house also have a license to carry, and there is protection on them at all times. So everybody in this organization is protected. That's all I'm going to say. So, and don't be afraid to use it to protect yourself is what I'm going to say. I am not going to mess around with this class of people. You are not going to threaten me or my rescue team or my animals because it'll be the worst threat you ever make in your life. That's a promise. That's not a threat. That's a promise. So angry, so angry. So guys, I'm going to put um, all the uh, emails, the case number on this video when I shut down. Um, if you need any information, like I stated earlier in the video, any videos on YouTube, easily to share. <clears throat> if you want to contact the news, I haven't gone that route yet. Um, I just didn't want to. <laughs> Um, but if that's what it takes, then, you know, we always get all the important stuff on the media. We have some great contacts in, uh, the media. I'm very blessed. We've, we've made some great contacts. So, um, yeah, so I'll put all the information on this video and please guys, you know, I, I love you so much and I appreciate the support. Um, you know, Carol's is, Carol's a little fragile, um, and the constant sending her private messages. Um, she's got a lot going on in, in, on her own plate. So please, please refrain from sending private messages. A lot of the times I refuse um, friend requests on Facebook because I don't do my personal Facebook. Like I don't peep private messages and all that stuff. I don't have time for that. If somebody wants to reach me, they have our 100 plus email. The only reason I'm on social media is for rescue. If I didn't have the rescue, I would be completely off social media. I would not have a Facebook account. I can promise you that. I hate social media. I love it for this reason, for the rescue. But personally, I, I don't need to tell people what I had for dinner and, you know, how I couldn't sleep last night. That's not important to me. Um... But um, it's great for connecting with old friends or family. That's cool. But um, anyways, I do not do 
uh, private messaging. If you need to reach 100 plus as a rescue, please reach us at our Gmail. You have our 877 number. Um, you can always call us if you have any questions that are important, but please don't just call to shoot the shit because it takes time away from us doing what we are doing. And guys, we're so exhausted. We're so exhausted and we will never turn a person away as far as calling. But if you have something to help us, um, that you really think can help a situation, um, and, and bring light to a situation, or if it's a cruelty case or it's something you need to report, or it's, it's something important you want to ask us, you know, if you know of an animal that, um, is in jeopardy or being abused, please don't ever, ever, ever hesitate by reaching out to us. We're here. But um, not to just shoot the shit and tell me how your day is going, you know, um, are you okay? Because um, then I get on the phone and it just, yeah, it's I'm tired. I want to stay focused on this. Um, and again, Carol is, you know, she's doing her thing with her home health care and taking care of sick people. Um, and it's a sad, it's a sad job. It's a rewarding and beautiful thing, but... She's got her a lot, a lot of things going on too. So please refrain from reaching out to Carol privately. Um, she feels that she always has to respond to everybody. Me, on the other hand, I don't. I don't respond because I don't have time. And I hope you don't take it personally. I just, I don't have the energy and I don't have the time. Um, I love you guys so much. And um, I just appreciate you mm -hmm. so, so much. Um, yeah. Um, so guys... I'm going to, when I shut down, I'm going to put all the information for you. I'm asking everyone, if you have not already, send an email. Send an email. That's right. Um, if you're going to make a phone call, if you're going to send an email, be firm, but be respectful. Because remember, that's a reflection of who you are. If you write an email and you're swearing at them, they're going to be like, you think they're honestly going to take you serious. They're not. They're not. You can be stern, you can be firm and stern and, and get to the point. Um, and, and just please just be respectful. That's all. She said, uh, I'm just reading. Sorry. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm breathing. I'm taking a deep breath, deep, deep breath. Thank you, everybody, for your support. I'm reading the comments of support. They mean the world. They mean so much. So I'm going to shut down. I'm sure you're sick of hearing me babbling on. Uh, everybody, please try to have a good night. Um, and again, all the information, email, email, email. Don't let this go. Please, please have a good night, everybody. This is Amy signing off. 100 plus abandoned dogs of Everglades, Florida.